by 1995, there was at least 40 technology PR firms. And by 2000, there was at least 60 to 70 pure technology PR from plays. Um, and of course, the dot com bus, which we'll come back to, was around 2002. And that had a big impact on obviously the tech PR firms, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Back to the early 80s, you uh, started to see these big campaigns. So you you saw the seeds of what Steve Jobs used to do, if you remember, with the blue jeans and the black turtlenecks and walking on the giant stage. And, you know, these, these, you know, it's like jets going over, you know, and, and everything, leading all the way up to the smartphone in 2007, you know. But these were extravagant, and these were PR, you know, things where we made lots of money. I mean, the last one we did was only four or five years ago for Samsung launching their health wearable product. And, I mean, these are $2 million launches, you know. So it, it, that's, it had its seeds back in the 80s, launching, you know, the PCs, launching uh, all the application software, et cetera. And I just followed the evolution, you know. And by 1992, the Weber Group was the largest tech PR firm in the world. And we had opened in Palo Alto and London. And we were servicing a variety of clients, introducing SAP around the world, SAS Institute. I had mentioned a few of these previously. But now, uh, to be fair to other people that were starting to open their own shops, there was a woman who had left Regis after helping launch the Macintosh. And her name was Andy Cunningham. And uh, she was, uh, she and still is, uh, I haven't talked to her in years, but um, she was a great competitor. And uh, she was on the West Coast. So she was, um, if not in Palo Alto, uh, no, it was where Apple is, Mountain View, is where her shop was. And uh, she eventually got bought, I think, by a British company as well. But um, and then, but she was great. She uh, she was very competitive, a, a great strategist, you know, because there was also just like other categories of PR, Shelley, which you you know, there's shops that are very ink oriented or very publicity oriented, and then there's shops that are very strategy based and more consultative in nature which we were a mix, and uh, Andy was a mix. Regis was a lot more strategy, and that's why he ultimately sold to Ernst & Young, but then bought himself back because he didn't like working with the consultants. So I thought you and, the, and your audience would be interested in knowing where some of these how some of these places got bought or where they went and, you know, and, and where they're going. Um, a few other names that I was writing down in the early 80s and all the way through to the early 90s, and today is still one of the largest now PR firms. I think they're around 100 million, and that's Wagner Edstrom. And uh, they were one of the few, they and one called Pam Alexander, uh, were the only two I recall that had major impact that weren't either in Silicon Valley or... Um, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and those were the two really hotbeds of technology PR, you know, and um, Wag WagEd, as they're known, was actually in Portland, Oregon, of all places, but they had one big client, like I was mentioning before, a lot of these places had one. I had Lotus and digital equipment it took me, and IBM for a while, and then they had, of course, Microsoft, and they also were one of the pioneers, and I give Pam Edstrom this award. She really was a pioneer in the CEO as rock star. And how do you manage and promote CEO as rock star? And, of course, she had one in Bill Gates. So, and that gave her a lot of power with the media. Much like the energy I mentioned before to you, like the entertainment uh, PR people um, at the time, like Pat Kingsley, who would tell the Today Show, you will not ask that question. 
Now, we could have an ethical discussion about, you know, all of this. But Pam learned very quickly, and then we all copied that. So I wanted to make Mitch Kapoor buy more Hawaiian shirts, not less Hawaiian shirts, you know. I wanted Scott McNeely to actually bring his hockey stick, that it was his hobby, you know, to the press conference from Sun Microsystems, you know. And then you had characters, obviously, like Philippe Kahn, who had Borland, and he would uh, give away dollar bills to everybody in the audience, you know. I mean, it was, it, it was, there was a bit of a, a carnivalesque kind of feeling in that 80s and 90s of the high-tech PR, you know, sort of world. Um, and, again, Wegad still exists to this day. I think Melissa is deeply interested in... Um, in uh, healthcare and medical technology as well, but hats off to her. I think she basically, I think she, I built the largest PR firm uh, at the time in the world, but now she's got, of all the tech pioneers, she's remained independent and has the largest. 